Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Today's video is about bipolar spectrum illness, and it's based on a viewer question from Saddam. And he says, Ma'am, it's my fourth time I have been asking that I have been diagnosed with bipolar spectrum three years ago. Now I'm 21. I have read a lot, but I'm still confused. Will my diagnosis change to bipolar one or two in the future? or will it remain as bipolar spectrum? Please answer, I'm in great worry. Thanks for the question, Saddam. Now, because Saddam has asked other questions of me, I know that he's from India, so I'm assuming that India uses bipolar spectrum terminology. The short answer is that here in the US, bipolar spectrum is not an official term. However, it is debated by researchers and clinicians as to whether bipolar disorder and depression or unipolar depression really should be considered one bipolar spectrum illness and not separate diagnoses. This concept of bipolar spectrum dates back to the early 1900s with Emil Kreplin. Kreplin was a German psychiatrist and considered the father of, mo of modern psychiatry. He identified schizophrenia and manic depression, which he termed manic depressive insanity. This was a, defined in his book, Manic Depressive Insanity and Paranoia, published in 1921. And this is where we get the term manic depression, which we also don't use as an official term anymore. Manic depressive insanity was a recurring illness of both depression and mania with or without the psychosis. The key feature of the illness was the fact that it was episodic and the episodes come and go. This is different from the other illnesses we have in psychiatry. With schizophrenia, the course of the illness is that it comes and it stays. The symptoms plateau to where it remains at the same level for long periods and then over time you can have dips where the illness gets worse. People with anxiety can have waves of it where their anxiety is more intense and unmanageable and then it improves. But they still have some degree of anxiety that's always there, but it's just manageable. You may even say or think about yourself, this is just how I am. Things just bother me more than other people. With ADHD, the peak occurrence of this illness is in childhood and it can completely go away or improve to the point where, like anxiety, the symptoms are manageable. And many people do continue to have symptoms as adults. But depression and mania act differently. You have these episodes where you can have all of the symptoms that look like depression or look like mania, and it's there for a while, then it goes away. And sometimes with depression, it can be there for a long time, like years, but for the most part, the nature of the mood disorders, depression and mania, is that they come and they go. And this is how Kreplin conceptualized this illness of manic depression. The insanity part comes with the presence of psychosis that can occur in either the manic or the depressive state. I did a video talking about psychotic depression that you can watch for more understanding about that condition. In 1980, the third edition of the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders was published and manic depressive insanity was split into bipolar disorder and unipolar depression. With this change, the key feature of the illness became polarity rather than episodes. So it was thought that the experience of having opposite disordered mood states is a separate phenomenon from having the same mood state that repeats. So repeating episodes of depression was carved out as a separate illness called major depression. And repeating episodes of opposite poles of mania and depression was then termed bipolar disorder. Not everyone has accepted this change. Some believe Kreplin's original broader concept of manic depression more accurately describes what we see in practice. Some researchers believe that there's more to bipolar disorder than mania and depression, and we should change the term to bipolar spectrum to include other conditions like recurrent severe depression with psychosis, depression mixed with mania, cyclothymia, antidepressant-induced mania, anxious depression, atypical depression. 
A typical depression is a subtype of major depression with certain features like increased appetite and sleep, as well as being able to transiently have a better mood if something positive happens. Usually with depression, having a good day doesn't brighten up your mood. In fact, one of the symptoms of depression is anhedonia. Anhedonia is when you're not able to find joy or pleasure in anything. Now, there are some who go a little further and believe that depression doesn't even happen without mania. And this concept is called the primacy of mania. The saying is that mania is the fire and depression is the ash. This viewpoint is not as popular and not as accepted as the view of mania and depression being grouped together as a single bipolar spectrum illness. So, there are people in the United States who believe that we should change the terminology to bipolar spectrum disorder to put it closer to what Emil Kreplin originally intended. His concept is a broader illness that includes episodes of mania and depression allowing people to manifest either mania or depression at any time. So getting back to Saddam's question of whether his bipolar spectrum diagnosis would, would at some point convert to bipolar one or bipolar two. Terminology wise, no, it won't because bipolar one and bipolar two are terms that are based on a different way of thinking about the illness. Since bipolar spectrum is more of an umbrella term that includes having mania and depression, it already includes bipolar one and bipolar two disorder. So it's a terminology thing. However, if the real question is, will you start having manic episodes? That's hard to predict. Having a family member who's had a manic episode increases the chance that at some point you will have one, but it's still not guaranteed. If you currently are having only depression, maybe with a little anxiety mixed in, you could continue to have depression that returns without mania or hypomania ever happening. So what does this issue of bipolar spectrum mean practically? It doesn't mean that if you've ever been depressed, you need to worry that you really have bipolar disorder. Keep in mind that bipolar spectrum or the original manic depressive insanity did include having recurring depressions without a manic episode. That's one of the ways that it could manifest. If you have an anxious depression, that anxiety or agitation with your depression is different from mania. With mania, you can have psychosis, extreme impulsivity, or poor judgment, just to name a few of the symptoms. And that's not the same as anxiety, so you can continue to have anxiety that never turns into mania. But even if we did consider it a spectrum illness where on one end you have depression alone and on the other end you have depression and mania, people can still remain at one end of the spectrum. So you don't need to hold your breath waiting to have a manic episode. If you have a first degree relative with bipolar disorder like a parent or a sibling, then you do have a greater risk of man manifesting mania or hypomania at some point, but it's still not a given. So if you've only had depression and no mania, we still treat you with an antidepressant first until we see a reason to add a mood stabilizer. Reasons to add a mood stabilizer would be emerging mania or hypomania, or if your depression did not adequately respond to a mood stabilizer alone, and we call this treatment-resistant depression. The treatment for treatment-resistant depression looks very similar to the treatment for bipolar disorder. For more on what mania and hypomania look like, watch this video that I did giving you a very detailed explanation. Also take a look at my depression and bipolar playlist, which address some of the other uh, things that I've mentioned like cyclothymia and treatment resistant depression. So there's a lot in my back catalog that you can watch to get a better understanding of some of these terms. Thanks for watching. See you next time.